Gentlemen, I'd also like to thank our ranking member for uh, carrying the flag here on our side and combating some of the misinformation that's coming out from the other side, and I know the other side certainly feels the same way. Um, but it, it's not the President saying all these things are going to happen uh, if we do not address this issue. It's every economist on the planet, except for a few that may get paid uh, by somebody who wants them to come up with another solution or another answer. So to pin this all on the President to say that he's somehow hyping this, I think is, is not exactly true. And I think what the American people are seeing and what we're seeing now is that as we come to the end, as we get close to a solution to this problem, the House Republican Caucus says, wait, we got a solution. Let's change the Constitution. That is not a sincere effort to try to address this problem. We have had people negotiating this day in and day out, and to come in within days of us, you know, destabilizing the markets and say, our solution is to change the Constitution of the United States, I think is inadequate. And I've heard several members get up and talk about this debt in the last couple years and everything else, completely ignoring the fact that our economy collapsed just two years ago. Just two years ago, the economy completely collapsed, and collapsed in part because of the recklessness and the deregulation of Wall Street, taking the cops off the beat and letting all of this financial machinations continue to happen without any regulation at all. So to put up a placard that says we need to reduce regulations on Wall Street is a recipe to implement the same policies that got us in the trouble in the first place. And lastly, I would just like to say, I know this is called a balanced budget amendment, but the one thing that is not included is balance. When you look at the last 30 years and you look at the accumulation of wealth that went from the middle class, wages being stagnant over 30 years, and the fact that in the late 70s, the top 1% of people in the country, top 1% of uh, the wealthiest, had 9% of real income in the late 70s. The top 1% now has 25% of real income in the country. The average CEO in the late 60s made 48 bucks for every dollar the worker made. Today it's 280. And to try to put into the Constitution of the United States an additional hurdle to try to ask those people who have benefited so greatly for being born in America and for generating wealth in America and having a court system and a military and transportation system available to them to make it harder to ask them to contribute to solve some of these problems, I think is a real problem because at the same time you're making it easier with your GDP number of 18 percent to cut Medicare and to cut those programs that are investments here in the United States that keep this great system going. The, uh,